All right, um, I'm going to mute you guys for a moment. We'll get started. Whoever that was, okay. Um, well, welcome to the first one of these. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm hoping that as we get going, we can make this um, a little bit more interactive. Um, front part of what I want to talk about is underwater dolphin kicking, and, and we're going to go through a little bit of the history lesson. Um, I actually have a video that we're going to watch as a group just to see um, the evolution of it. Um, so for those of you guys that have never heard this speech before, this will be new. For some of you, that especially have some for me, uh, you've heard part of this speech um, probably the beginning of every single season when we talk about dolphin kicking. Um, you know, dolphin kicking is, for, for you know, no better way to, to attribute it, the fifth stroke of swimming. Um, it, is, it is involved now in every single stroke that we do at every single distance, even breaststroke, with the dolphin kick being part of the uh, underwater pullout. Um, aside from breaststroke with fly back and freestyle, if you are not um, engaging and making yourself a better dolphin kicker, you are putting yourself at a significant disadvantage of the race. Um, you know, dolphin kick, and, and I know that we had this talk with, with some of our swimmers for the last couple of years, Coach Glenn and I, um, but uh, one of the things that we had said uh, back in, I believe it was 2018, uh, the 1650 freestyle was swum at NCAAs, the men's NCAAs. And for 66 laps, if you watch that race, pretty much everybody in that event um, is kicking seven to eight yards off the wall in the 1650. So, I mean, just think about that 66 laps, eight yards off every single wall, you're looking at 500 plus yards of that race with being swum underwater. I mean, that is, that is unbelievable. I and mean, if you're watching swimming um, at the higher levels as you get older, you know, beginning – Beginning in Illinois, obviously, but then as you go into national meets and then um, into college swimming, um, you know, 15 meters isn't, uh, isn't a goal. It's an expectation um, getting off the wall. And, and if you're not getting yourself to 15 meters or not getting close to 15 meters um, at maximum speed, um, you, you're starting off every race or, or you know, every lap as it is um, at some sort of disadvantage. So, you know, where we're at with dolphin kicking is going to be a quick little – Quick history lesson, then we're going to watch a video on it. Um, you know, it, it really wasn't until about 1984 that someone actually tried adding dolphin kicking into their race. Um, and then in 1988, uh, a number of swimmers took dolphin kicking to an entirely new level. Um, and, and that's the video that we're going to start off with watching, which was uh, a term that, that coach, uh, the coaches on this call would remember as the Burkhoff Blastoff. Um, uh, it was a swimmer named David Burkhoff who really uh, – made a, a name for himself by going uh, 35 to 40 meters underwater um, on every single lap. And he actually did it at the Olympics. He went 35, uh, him and a number of other swimmers went 35 plus meters on the first length um, and, and really set a trend of, of what you could do with dolphin kick in your races. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over and hopefully I share this video correctly so that we can uh, watch a little bit here on dolphin kick. Okay, so um, obviously we saw a little bit of that and I wanted, I wanted to give the floor for a moment to um, Coach Mike and Coach Jeff. I'm gonna start with Coach Mike. Um, Mike, obviously, you know, you, 1988, um, you know, you were, I, were you in college still? Mike? Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember, do you remember as, as being a swimmer around that time, do you remember what that, you know, seeing something like that, what that meant to, to your swimming and that that opened your eyes to what, you know, what the possibilities were? Um, yeah, because basically the one stroke that was not very proficient and only I am was the uh, backstroke. Sorry about that. Mike, you're breaking up. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. I have very, very bad internet connection. No problem. No problem. Uh, but it was one of those things that on my own, I actually took some fins out and I started doing widths across the pool, dolphin kicking, uh, just to try and help my IM uh, backstroke leg because I wasn't very good at it. Um, and it was actually really kind of fun because I'd end up practice by just doing widths across the pool. Uh, 
underwater kicking backstrokes. But it was definitely something new, definitely something that was like, wow, this is actually kind of fun. Um, and it kind of made it more enjoyable to train for certain for the backstroke for me. Um, you know, I, you know, part of that video it talks about you know that right after that Olympics, obviously, you know, the, these these athletes, a number of athletes, had shown um, what what kind of a significant impact kicking underwater could be. Um, they they changed it to ten meters immediately. Then obviously in 1991 they backed it off to 15 meters. What what they don't show you in the video was um, that the change to 15 meters was only for backstroke, and they actually did not institute a 15 meter rule for fly or for breast until 1988 or 1998. I apologize. Um, you know, one of the things that, that, that I was this summer growing up, that was around my time. I was actually had just started college when the 15 meter rule um, came into effect for free and fly. And there was a summer, I believe she was a year older than me. Um, her name was Misty Hyman. And um, I, I'm not sure if she still holds the national record for high school. Um, she may, it, it, it's, it's it doesn't anymore for the fly, um, but she was – her time in the fly when she was in high school would have won NCAAs every single year, and she was – I mean, to say that she was the gold standard for underwater dolphin kicking, it probably undersells how great she was. Um, she would swim the 100 fly in short course with four strokes, and the four strokes that she would take were always the single stroke into the wall. Um, so she would take a breath on that stroke, take a breath on the turn, and those were the only breaths that she would take. Uh, on every single length of the 100 fly. And I, I think she went 49 in high school or was 50.0 in high school. I mean, she was right there. Um, and she, she was, was 51.1. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. And she was, she was pretty much poised. Um, at that point, it was one of those, you know, wow, this summer is going to take the world by storm um, when she gets to college. And this rule change um, really changed her swimming a little bit. And, and I know that's a, that's a video for a different time. Um, but yeah, in 88, or 1998, they changed the rule. They made it 15 minutes for all the strokes. And since then, it's been, um, you know, a goal of figuring out how to get uh, to the 15-meter mark as fast as you possibly can. So um, to talk about the kick it, it itself, um, I wanted to talk about a few finer points. And, and coaches, um, if you're on the call and you want to jump in and add something, um, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, what works is, is the question. Should I take a big kick? Should I take small kicks? Should I have fast kicks? Should I have slow kicks? Um, I, and, you know, the answer that, that we consistently give is it depends. Um, you know, the most important part of the dolphin kick um, isn't necessarily the size or the speed, but it is the distance that you travel per kick. You know, the goal of dolphin kicking is to get as far as you can, um, as fast as you can, um, to the 15-meter mark. So when to do that, it's, it's all about the distance per kick. And to do that, we have to engage our entire body. Um, it can't just be something that goes with your ankles or your knees uh, or your hips. It's everything moving together. Um, without that, you're not going to be as successful at being a dolphin kicker. So um, I know, you know, ways to improve our dolphin kick, and this is something that everyone always talks, and, um, you know, there's some simple, easy things to talk about. You know, there's two directions of the kick. It's the up kick and the down kick. So on the up kick, we're talking about working our abs, our hip flexors, and our hamstrings. On the down kick, we're talking about working our lower back, our butt muscles and our quads, all right? We wanna strengthen all those areas to have a stronger up kick and down kick. You cannot be a successful dolphin kicker without being able to kick in both directions. Being strong and forcing your feet down doesn't do you any good if you can't get those feet back up and vice versa. So you have to be able to kick in both directions and be consistent in both directions to be a strong dolphin kicker. You know, one of the things that I know um, I can do a better job on as a coach, and I'm not sure at one of our, some of our other coaches, how they work this into their practices is to become a better dolphin kicker. You need to train in all four planes of the stroke, meaning 360 degrees. Um, you know, some of my swimmers or some of the swimmers that I've worked with over the years are significantly better on their stomach than their back or the significantly better rotated to their side slightly at a 45 degree angle if they're doing butterfly kick or a side at a 45 degree angle if they're doing backstroke kick. It all depends. Um, and, and for some of us, we don't, figure out those nuances because we don't do a, a strong enough job of training all 360 degrees of the dolphin kick. So um, one of the things I know I'm going to, I'm going to be working on more as I was doing some of this research is, is doing different variations of dolphin kicking and finding ways to make you rotate on your body, on your side, on your back, going from side to side throughout a 25 or throughout 50 meters. Because as, as we all know, 
you know, we know when we feel fast and we're underwater. We know when, we're, when we have good dolphin kicks. We know when we have a good pullout. We know when we're fast and out of our turns. We can feel it. So, so training in all those planes um, will really help you gauge what position your body needs to be in for you to maximize your speed. Um, you know, there, there, there's questions about dolphin kicking and is it better for me to be very, very rigid from my chest up, to be very loose from my chest up, to kind of find that in between. I think it depends on the athlete. Um, you know, so much of that is going to be dependent on you, just like the big and small and the fast and slow discussion. It's going to depend on your body. But but as far as the position that your body's in in the water, I mean, there's going to be a, a natural feeling for you about where you're able to maintain the most speed possible. So training in all four planes um, is, is really, really important. Um, is there anything I've missed so far, coaches? Anybody need to jump in and say anything? No? Okay. Um, you know, a tool that we use for dolphin kick training um, with, with our swimmers in Aurora for gold and above, and, and I would like to hear some, some comments from the other coaches on things they do, and then I'm going to, if you, any swimmers have anything they want to add uh, of ways that they can improve their kicking, we want to hear from you also. But one of the tools that we use um, is our tempo trainers. So um, our tempo trainers that, that a lot of us have for practice, you know, we set at, at 0 0.50, and, and why we set it at 0 0.50 is – you know, mathematically and, and the shape of the body and, and, and the kick that you're making, um, if, if you are kicking at a speed of half a second per dolphin kick, so two kicks every second, um, that is about, and again, it depends on the individual, I'm, I'm being very general, that is about the speed that you want to have per kick to maintain the, the, the most speed that you can underwater is half a second per dolphin kick. So we set our tempo trainers at 0.5, and we do a lot of underwater dolphin kicking uh, with fins, without fins, at our tempo trainers at set at 0.5. And hearing that beep and that constant reminder of when you need to start your down kick or your up kick, if that's where, you, where your, your beep is falling, um, really helps to establish the rhythm that you want to have for your dolphin kicks. From there, it becomes how big can I make that kick while still maintaining that rhythm? And I think that's where you really start to find the difference between good dolphin kickers and great dolphin kickers and people that can get to 15 meters in seven or eight kicks and people that get to 15 meters in 12 or 13 kicks. Um, because that seven or eight kick person is probably kicking at a lot of speed um, and potentially getting there faster than the person that's taking 12 or 13 and they're using less energy to do so. So um, coaches, Mike, Jeff, Jeremy, do you guys have anything you want to add of ways that you guys work on improving the dolphin kick? Uh, I just like to add uh, on your, your half a second per, per kick. Um, one, of the, one of Misty Hyman's coaches, uh, Bob Gillett, um, who really did a lot with what he oh, again. Sorry, Mike, that was, I hit the wrong person. I apologize. That's okay. Um, I listened to him talk a couple times, um, talked to him on deck before, but his whole thing was his number was 0.48, um, which is basically right a rounding error for half a second, because he said if for every two kicks, that should equal one stroke cycle. So if you're taking, if your one stroke cycle takes us um, 1.1 seconds to have your arms go through, through a cycle and you get two kicks in, a, in one second, as opposed to 1.1 seconds, you're actually going faster underwater than you are kicking than you will when you take your cycle. Um, so basically, the kick, the, that's where he came up with the number of 0.48. Um, but this, that guy would literally go to hydrodynamic testing and watch fish move and the eddy currents around the fish body that rolled down the body and how the body moved from a fish so that he could put it into swimming. One of the things... Mike, you're covering the microphone. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. There you go. Uh, switch things. Uh, when we do vertical kicking, one of the things we say is like, okay, if we're going to kick for 10 seconds, vertical kick. Arms cross your chest. You want to get you want to get 20 kicks in that 10 seconds. And when we first start doing it, some people only get like eight or 12, and then some get a little bit more. You know, and if you're getting 20, you know, that's kind of what we found is is the the tempo we like the best. So and, half the, the, and the reverse is also true, Mike, because we, we do that a lot as well. And if you're getting 28 or 29, you're probably taking two smaller kicks and you're not engaging the entire body. And it becomes a matter of rushing the kick as opposed to taking a strong kick every single time. So yeah, we have the, a, the inverse is also true. 
Correct. Um, when you when you're getting that many kicks, it's kind of like when you're shaking your boots off when you come out of the snow and you don't want to use your hands. Just kind of shake your foot to get the boot off, your shoe off. Um, that's kind of what you're doing. You're really not. It's not efficient. But I think the half second. You, you, it's amazing watching the kicks change when you get those twenty kicks in ten seconds on how the, the, the what we say is get as big a kick you can in that half second. Coach Jeff, you have something you want to add? You unmuted yourself. Um, no, one thing that I, you know, I talk to the kids a lot about is the angle of the push off of a wall, I think is real important. A lot of the kids, I think, or a lot of swimmers, um, just push straight off the wall um, and aren't deep enough. And if you watch, you know, two of the, the greatest underwater kickers of all time, and Phelps and Ryan Lochte, um, they're pushing at an angle. Um, there's a great video of Ryan Lochte doing a 50 kick underwater. I think it's a 50 or maybe it's a hundred and they're showing him underwater and it's incredible how deep he gets um, when he's doing his dolphin kicks. Cause I think, you know, one of the things, if you're pushing off too shallow, a lot of kids push off, you know, six inches underwater, you're fighting to stay underwater. You're using a lot of your energy just to stay underwater and, and, and not using that, you know, efficiently to, uh, to propel yourself forward. So. So, uh, so I know we have got coach Brian and coach Jeremy, coach Jeremy, what do you want to add? Um, yeah, a couple of things, I guess, uh, um, the number that, the number that I've gone with, um, is 0.54, you know, so I guess we're all kind of hovering around a half second. I got 0.54 by just analyzing, uh, Natalie Coughlin underwater video um and she is probably arguably uh arguably again one of the best underwater kickers um in uh in the world or was one of the best underwater kickers in the world and actually one of the very few people whose uh up kick is actually stronger than her down kick um so uh we we've typically set tempo trainers at 0.54 and and uh and done stuff that way um I think another another good a good uh, tool for for developing underwater kicking or or at least the the underwater kick technique would be uh, wall kicking, um, streamlined dolphin kicking into a wall. Um, if you are if you've got too much knee bend when you're doing something like that, what you'll notice is you're pulling your body away from the wall. Your hands will lose contact with the wall and then you'll go into the wall and then you'll go away from the wall and then you'll go into the wall. And if that's you, you know you're bending your knees too much and you're pulling yourself backwards. So if you were to do your underwater dolphin kicks, you're going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. If you can maintain constant pressure against the wall while you're going through your your dolphin kicking, then we've really got the the technique the technique of the of the kick down. Can you clarify, Coach Jeremy, just so they all know, I, I know what you mean. You, When you're on the wall, you want them parallel to the bottom of the pool on the wall, not up yeah, against yeah, yeah. the wall in a vertical. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like yeah, streamline, streamline, parallel to the surface, you know, dolphin kicking the way you would. Um, if you're pulling yourself away from the wall while you're kicking, then you're, you're pulling yourself backwards. Perfect. Um, and, and now I got all these coaches on and, I, and I'm going to make a comment to all the swimmers and be like, well, yeah, we know, but this is one of the hardest things. You know, the single greatest thing you can do to improve your dolphin kicking is be consistent with it. All right. I, and, and I know that's something that we talk to you guys about a lot. Um, but it's, it's, you know, everyone wants to say, I want to be great underwater to swim me, but are you, are you strong or are you consistent underwater at practice? Are you, are you holding yourself accountable when you're in warmups and taking 10 yards off the wall or eight yards off the wall or whatever your kick is. And are you maintaining the kick speed that you want to create when you're in a race at practice? You know, talking about holding it at, at uh, you know, as coach Jeremy said, at 0.4 is all, is all fine and dandy when you're wearing a tempo trainer, but when you're not wearing a tempo trainer, are you doing it at 1.0? You know, and are you consistently doing it at 1.0 or are you training yourself to be at that 0.54? Cause that's, that is the most difficult part with underwater dolphin kicking, especially as we get into our practices. And we all know this, that, you know, that we're doing longer repeats or longer swims. Are we as consistent with our kick speed then as we are when we're doing 25s or 15 meter blasts underwater? Because we know that, that it's, it's easier to do 
when you have more time to recover. It's significantly harder to do with less time, and that is what more in reality our races are with that less time to recover. So, um, coaches, am I speaking accurately about one of the biggest things we can be working on is being consistent with it, as we see head nods. Um, any other tools, coaches, you want to share? Coach Brian, I know you uh, muted yourself. Anything you want to share about it? No. Um, I use the .50 base also. Uh, we, we use, that's, that's what we do. Um, my biggest thing is the mindset. It's not good enough to have long dolphin kicks and be long underwater. You have to be long and fast. And to do that, our mindset is you have to kick with a purpose. Like you, you have to do every wall off of every wall has to have purpose. And if you make it, if you do that in practice, off every wall, having purpose, it's going to be easy to do it in meets. Coach Jeremy? Yeah, um, and to um, I kind of expand upon that, um, you know, it, 15 meters is a nice target, um, but it's important, too, that we, you know, the, the whole purpose is to uh, maintain wall velocity for as long as possible, right? So um, if you're, if you get to a point where your kicks start starting to slow down or they're getting big and slow, uh, or you're just not moving forward, we should have surfaced already, right? Um, and so, you know, and, and, and a lot of swimmers, when they, when they go from, you know, kicking underwater to then approaching the surface, they tend to change what they're doing as well. Uh, we want to make sure that, that we're maintaining that velocity all the way through the breakout. Perfect. I, thank you for adding that, Coach Jeremy. I was actually going to make a statement about that as well. Um, you know, we, we as coaches, and again, I, I know I harp on this a lot, you know, the fastest that you will ever move in, in a race is when you dive in. The next fastest you'll ever move in a race is when you're pushing off the wall. Everything else is, is some sort of, of maintaining or deceleration. And the goal with our underwater dolphin kicks is to maintain that velocity that we create from that push off. Um, and, and Coach Jeremy has said it right, you know, while 15 meters is a great number, um, we don't want to be going 15 meters to sacrifice the speed that we're create or that we're maintaining underwater. Um, if that for you is eight meters, but it's five or six dolphin kicks to get you eight meters with your with maintaining your peak velocity, and you're able to go through your breakout with that, and that's perfectly fine. And then you can build from there. But don't don't sacrifice speed with a goal of getting further off the wall. I think is is what we're trying to say. So um, that is, those are some of the good tips. I have another video I wanted to show, and I promise this one is significantly shorter. But as we're all sitting here at home, um, and you're probably thinking, well, how am I going to be able to work on my dolphin kicking right now? I'm at home. Um, I have a nice little routine here. That's a, it's a flexibility routine. You know, one of the, one of the big things with dolphin kicking is, is also ankle flexibility. And I know, I believe it was Coach Jeff that mentioned uh, Ryan Lochte and Michael Phelps and when he was speaking. And if you've ever seen Ryan Lochte and Michael Phelps, underwater dolphin kick, you will note the flexibility of their ankles is um, quite, quite honestly unreal. And, um, you know, that while we can't all, you know, dream of being that flexible, there is ways to create more flexibility or more flexion in the ankles uh, by doing some simple exercises. So I wanted to walk you guys through a quick little, quick little video here of letting you see a little bit of ankle flexibility work. Ankle strength and flexibility exercises for improved undulatory underwater swimming. This is based on research by Fenton and McCoon uh, that showed that 30% of your underwater kick performance is explained by internal rotation strength of the ankle and also plantar flexion range. So the combination of the both improving the performance of the underwater kick. First up we have shin rolling. This is done to help release the fascia and the muscles that can restrict plantar flexion range. Then we move on to toe points. Now this is a strengthening and a range exercise together. You'll also notice that it's done with a degree of internal rotation as well. So the feet are internally rotated and pushing down. Continuing the plantar flexion strength and range exercises. Notice this is very different to a calf raise where your toes uh, would be extended rather than flexed as they are here. Next we have ankle circumduction. Now, again, we're talking about the toes here as well. Look how much movement we've got through the toes, right through the musculature, uh, through the bottom of the foot, 
Again, focusing on the internal rotation. Hold the knees as still as you can to maximize use of the ankles. Next, we have ankle internal rotation strength. So you can choose the strength uh, of the band that you'd want to use here and just stabilizing at the knee and just a pure internal rotation. This is a variation of the same exercise, but as you can see, it's a little bit harder to stabilize against um, the internal rotation strength of the ankle here. So to summarize the exercises to improve the underwater dolphin kick, we have shin rolling, toe points, plantar flexion, ankle circumduction, ankle internal rotation strength, and just the variation on that. So if you have any questions about the research or the exercise, so like I said, those are just some easy little flexibility exercises that you can do um, while you're sitting at home. And if you have the ability um, that can, you know, to increase some ankle flexibility um, and hopefully eventually lead to a little bit better dolphin kicking. Um, I got a number of other videos here. I'm not going to make you guys, I'm not going to bore you guys. I'm making you watch them right now. Um, but I will send you guys the link. One of them that's, that's, that's fantastic one with dolphin kicking and especially for you guys that are butterflyers. Um, in 2019, Caleb Dressel, he won the uh, gold medal at the world championships um, in Kazan. And uh, his race I have on video from the underwater perspective as opposed to the top. So you actually can hear the commentary of the of Rowdy Gaines and Dan Hicks um, as the race is unfolding, as we always see it on television on top of the water. But the video is, is fully of him underwater throughout the race. And, and something to note of when you're watching it, look at how his body position is. Obviously, Caleb Dressel is, you know, arguably the fastest male in the, in the world right now in the sport of swimming. But look at his body position on his underwater dolphin kicks. And, and something Coach Jeremy brought up in one of his things, and if I, if I was going to sit here and make you guys sit through another video, um, Caleb Dressel actually can be faster. If you watch his breakout, he actually decelerates through his breakout because as his hands begin to pull apart, he stops kicking. And I know that many of you guys have probably heard from your coaches, make sure you kick through the breakout. Caleb Dressel, when he won the world championship and just missed breaking the world record going the second fastest time in history, uh, does not kick through his breakout at all. The moment his hands break, he stops his legs, and you can see a slight pause in his stroke as he goes through his first cycle of butterfly before he returns to dolphin kicking. So um, I can send you guys that video. I also have a nice video for you freestylers of Simone Manuel. Simone Manuel with her coaches uh, has really focused on the last three years um, uh, about being better underwater because she felt like she was getting beat off the start at the Olympics on her dolphin kicking and off the turn, even though she won the gold medal. And so um, there's a little bit of video here of, her prior to all the work that her and her coaches at Stanford have done and her after. And while you watch, look at her body position, look at her kick speed, look at the angle at which she's bending her knees. It's significantly changed for an Olympic level swimmer to do that. Um, it's, it's pretty fascinating. And I think her fastest swimming um, is still to come. So uh, coach Joe Davola, you, uh, you have something you want to add? You unmuted yourself. Oh, no, I was just, that video that was, um, that you showed, for the, um, the ankle flexibility and all that. Um, and I'm assuming you're sending that to everybody as well. Mm -hmm. um, will be. You know, depending on, you know, let, let, let's say we get in the water in two weeks or we get in the water three weeks or a month from now or whatever. Um, that would be something that, I, that, you know, if you could spend 10 or 15 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day for the next 14 days, the next 21 days, the next, 30 days, however long it is that we're out of the water. I think you could make significant um, improvements in your ankle flexibility. And that's something that would be easy to do 10 or 15 minutes a day while you're just watching TV or, or whatever it is that you're doing that, um, that, you know, we, we could see a, a huge improvement over, you know, 14 to 30 days or so. So that's all. Any other coaches have anything you want to add? Mike? Uh, watching that last video reminding me of my high school coach. Um, when we would do push-ups, we would not put our toes down. We would we would have our feet pointed, so kind of like a yoga pose uh, type thing. But so you'd be doing push-ups on with your, the top of your foot down instead of your toes, which really stretches out your ankles too. So there's lots of things you can do for, for flexibility. Any other coaches have anything they want to add? Hey, uh, Summers, do you guys have any questions or anything that you want to talk about with regards to dolphin kicking? Anything you ever wondered, especially since you have all the coaches on right now, I'm sure one of them could answer a question for you, especially if it's yours.
Nobody's got any questions about Dolphin Kick. Everybody's shy. That's okay. I'm going to send all this stuff out uh, to you guys. Um, it's a PDF, so I'll just send the Wait, PDF. Todd, 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 Todd. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Gonzalo, what's up, buddy? Uh, so I remember when I first came to Gold, we would have we would do like the 2025s dolphin kicks, and we started doing like 1525s dolphin kick mixed with fly, like one breath. Mm-hmm. I feel like that really helped with like dolphin kicks. I feel like that when we when we used to do those, like my dolphin kicks really improved. And I, I feel like we haven't done those in a while. I just think, I don't know. I was just wondering why we haven't done those. Because I felt like a really good improvement on my dolphin kicks doing those. Um, all right, do you want me to, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The, 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 the biggest reason that, that I know, at least from my standpoint, I don't know about our other coaches. I can let them speak. Um, I stopped doing as many um, was I, I did not like, I, you know, quite honestly, it's a safety concern for me of people that were putting themselves uh, in hyperventilating to go faster underwater to hold their breath. Um, we've done a lot more, at least in Aurora, we've done a lot more. Where we're only going one or two. Um, and then, or we're going a lot of 25s. We're going out you kick 15 meters because um, I want you to get air and I want you to be safe, but I also want you to learn to be as fast as you can for 15 meters and not necessarily for 25 yards. So Drew, do you have a question? No, I was just going to say, I kind of agree with, like, the, the way we've done it now because, like, with, I, I know at least with when we just did so many of them in a row, it kind of, like, made it really hard. And the kicks that I were, that I was doing, I was, like, running out of air, so they weren't my best kicks. So I kind of like how we do, like, um, the sets of four where it'll be, like, 15 – on the front end, 15 on the back end. Like, I kind of like it that way because that way I can get air and I can, like, actually focus on it. But when we weren't getting air, then I, I'm not really focusing on it, on actually making my kicks better. I'm just, like, trying to stay alive and stay underwater. So I like the way that we do it now. Any other coaches have any opinions? I don't know what you guys are doing. If you guys are doing a lot of 25s. With no breath. Uh, it, we'll go to the short end, 15 yards, like 20 on the 20. It's because it's only 15 yards. It's short and quick. Well, one thing that we do when we have the, the well available, <clears throat> we have a separate diving well. Um, and the width of the diving well is, a, <clears throat> um, is about twice as far. Uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's about 25 feet long or so. I think. And what we'll do is I'll have kids line up on all four sides of the diving well and they'll do um, a, a sit dive. And we have an elevated deck uh, uh, for the well. So I'll have the kids sit, do a sit dive, sprint across to the other side, do a flip as fast as they can, and then do dolphin kicks underwater um, to the other side. I really, I really like doing that. Um, we haven't done as much of it as of late. Um, because we don't have the well available to us as much. Um, I think when we do it a lot, it really helps us to improve. So I don't know if you guys, I know Todd, you don't have a separate well, but I don't, I don't know some of the other pools. If you have a separate well available to you, um, being able to do that or even doing widths, you know, being able to do widths like that, I think, um, just works on the speed. I think it works on speed in and out of the wall. Uh, which I think is crucial, and, you know, sprinting back underwater, so. Jeremy? Um, we'll either, like, manipulate the number of dolphin kicks that were taken off the wall and, and really focus on um, breaking through the surface uh, with speed and then kicking fast the rest of the way, or, I mean, yeah, we'll do, we'll do some full-on 25s, but not, not crazy on the – on the repeats um you know we may go a 25 underwater kick fast and then a 25 kick on your back you know and just you know go odds and evens that way or something like that but um i'd say the majority of what we do if, if we're gonna if we're gonna repeat it is gonna be you know go to the line in the middle of the pool you know get a line at you know 11 yards off the shallow end wall or something like that um 
you know, underwater kick fast to the line and then kick fast the rest of the way or swim fast the rest of the way. Um, and while we have the coaches on, I know a question that I get asked by my swimmers a lot, and I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on it. And I'm sure that swimmers from other sites would like to hear it as well. Um, when you're doing a lot of dolphin kick work, whether it's it's widths, whether it's well, whether it's manipulating the number, Coach Jeremy, um, are you guys doing it no fins, with fins, mixture of both? Do you see yourselves going a tendency to go one way over the other more heavily? I try to go more uh, no fins than with fins. Um, we do do some fin stuff just to to be fast and maybe give give the legs a little bit more resistance and assistance, but um, you're not going to be able to race with fins on. So I think, and, and depending on the length of the fin, it can really change the mechanics of your kick. So um, we tried. I, I'm not a huge equipment user to begin with, but um, you know, when, if we if we use it, we use it sparingly. Coach Brian, what, what do you what do you guys use? We, we're probably about 50-50. We only use zoomers, not fins per se. Um, I feel like if they can get their feet moving to the 0 .50 with the, the zoomers on, it's going to be easy when they don't have the, when, when they don't have the zoomers on to make sure they're at 0.50. Mike, uh, yeah, um, I think at the beginning of the year we, we do do more fins just to kind of get the strength aspect from it. Um, and then go away from it uh, as we get closer to the end of the year, uh, except for those kids that might be ch challenged underwater. Um, some kids just don't have that, the motion yet. So we let those kids use the fins still a little bit longer. Um, and as you said before, we'll do a lot of them we'll, when we're doing the short pool, we'll just do stomach side, we'll rotate from stomach side back as we go through. So basically you're doing 360 degrees you know, on your stomach, on your side, on your back, on your stomach, on your side, your back, just keep rolling through there like that, just to get different planes. Um, and, and I know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm putting to you guys on the spot and I, I, I know that you didn't know I was going to ask that question. Um, when you're training your dolphin kick and I, and we all, you know, as athletes, as I even talked about, people feel more comfortable in certain planes than the others. Are you working all planes with your swimmers, you know, Jeremy, I know you said that you, you tend to do a lot of your work without fins, but are, are you uh, working the athletes so they're understanding the strength on the back side stomach, or are you going more where they feel comfortable? It's something I probably don't, um, I, I don't uh, explicitly state enough or as much as I should. Um, I, we will on occasion say, you know, number one on your stomach, number two on your side, number three on your back, but I don't do it as much as we probably should. Coach Jeff, are you, are you the same? Are you, are yeah, you, I, uh, I, we talk about, um, we talk about varying, um, what position that you're in either on your back, your side to get a feel for what works best for you. Um, and I, and I talked to the kids about varying it, but I probably, I probably, along with Jeremy, I need to do a better job of specifying, okay, we're going to do, you know, like Jeremy said, number one on your stomach, number two on your side, number three on your back. So you get a feel of, you know, what works best for you. Cause I know like, um, you know, and I think Kaylee's on the, on the, the zoom meeting, um, Kaylee loves kicking on her back underwater on her back she I mean she makes 25 meters or 25 yards with zero problem at all and fast but when we turn around her stomach she doesn't like it as much so um you know for each person it, I think it's finding what you're comfortable with See, and, and I what think, you're fastest with I think I'm 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 the opposite of both of you I think I'm I think I uh instruct it too much to where they're comfortable and I don't uh push the envelope enough to where they aren't as comfortable and I think you know I and I see Michaela next to you on my screen and I can I can think how many times Michaela says what should I do and I I immediately say I'll do them on your stomach because I think she's so much better on her stomach and I want her to maximize that and I probably didn't do enough of you know work them on your back work them on your side where I was letting her have some of those variations and I think that's something that I as a coach can be better of is is you know training all, all 360 degrees and working on the different planes to not only um, improve the plane that they're great in or, or good in, but uh, improve the one that they're not as strong in. So Michaela can stop smiling. Like I just called her out on the, on the, uh, on the zoom call. Yeah. Um, because the reality, the reality on that Todd is, I mean, you really need to be 
Um, you, you need to be as good as you can in all the planes because even let's say you're doing butterfly, you're pushing off on your side. Eventually, um, or, you know, I mean, it, it, you're swimming butterfly on your stomach, um, you know, obviously. But when, when you're pushing off, you're going to, the body's going to be rotating. So you want to be able to be fast as it rotates back to where your stomach, um, you know, is facing the bottom of the pool. So. Um, Jeremy, do you have something you want to add? I was just going to add, I mean, the obvious, <clears throat> the obvious, uh, you know, if you're an IMer and, and obviously, you know, as younger swimmers, we're trying to make all of you IMers, you're going to need to be able to kick on your stomach and on your back. Yep. I mean, you're going to need to be effective on your stomach and on your back. So, you know, don't always just shade to what you're comfortable to, uh, but we definitely need to try and, and get good at, at everything. Well said. Um, is there any other qu any questions from the swimmers besides Gonzalo? And I know Drew made a statement that was excellent. Anybody else have anyone to add? Going once. Going twice. Okay. Um, I, like I said, I will send you guys that PDF. Um, there are videos on the on the very last page. Um, the one video I didn't I didn't mention yet. That's the first one. It is rather long, um, and it's actually for me as a as a uh, a numbers guy. I really enjoy the the technical side of everything. Um, it's an analyzation of a person's underwater dolphin kick uh, with their body position being rigid, being really relaxed, and kind of an in between. And you can kind of get a sense of what the changing of your body position can do with some in, in terms of changing your velocity. Um, so if you want to see some more technical side, uh, you can watch that video. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, the other ones are really short, minute, minute and a half long, and you can just see different aspects of dolphin kicking of some swimmers that you know. Um, this was great. I really thank you guys for joining. Um, next week on Monday, we're going to have a similar meeting. Um, it's going to be led by Coach Brian. Um, and it is going to be focused on the breaststroke underwater pullouts. We're going to be focusing on pullouts of breaststroke um, and, and uh, how it's evolved and how we can maximize our speed um, on the breaststroke underwater pullouts. So until then, um, we'll see you guys at your group meetings. Have a great night. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you.